testifying saying what is a man that thou art mindful of churches all over America, and in Appalachia thousands are scattered among the hills. These churches are related by similarities in doctrine and manner of worship, sharing a literal interpretation of the Bible and an informality of approach. But each is independent, emphasizing its own particular passages of scripture. Certain verses are regarded by various sects as injunctions to specific acts of worship, which include anointing, drinking poison, faith healing, testifying, speaking in tongues, then handling poisonous snakes. The text that inspires one group of holiness churches is from the book of Mark. These things shall accompany them that believe. In my name shall they cast out demons. They shall speak in new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall in no wise hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. For the members of the Holiness Church at Scrabble Creek, West Virginia, taking up serpents is an expression of faith and a proof of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, just as speaking in tongues is regarded as the voice of God communicated through the speaker. Shrieking and convulsive dancing are part of a direct experience of the Holy Ghost, and they have earned church members the derogatory name of Holy Rollers. The serpent handlers are constantly faced with social pressure and even persecution from other people in the area. Meetings occur several times a week and last four to six hours. There is no minister. Individual members spontaneously decide the direction each meeting will take and participate as the Lord calls them to do so. The snakes handled in the Scrabble Creek services are copperheads and rattlesnakes, caught in the hills and kept in the homes of the members. Snake handlers are frequently bitten and rarely accept medical aid. Although snake bite is not usually fatal, many handlers have died. Snakes are only brought to church and then only handled if the Holy Ghost calls the members to do so. I got the Holy Ghost when I was about 13. And uh, God was really good to me and, and, and I had very much trouble. I was a very mean fellow, just like, and, uh, but God was good to me and he, he let me out of jail, and I promised him if I got out that I would serve him. And when I did get out, it was probably a month or maybe two months before I ever repented. But when I did repent, I could feel the quickening power that comes with the Holy Ghost, but I didn't have the evidence of speaking in tongues like I had before. And... Uh, I prayed to God for might near the year and seek the Lord and, and I thought that he was a fooling with me and I had never got the power back. I, I, I wondered about the tongue, see, because without, without the evidence of speaking in tongues, well, we, we ain't got it, see, and that's uh, what I was concerned with. And so... Uh, I prayed and seek God and, and I couldn't get no peace of mind about it. And but of course I would dance under the power and, and the quickening power wouldn't get on me. But <clears throat> thank God it, one night it was in a meeting and there was a young girl there, she was playing the piano. And uh she uh come off the platform and uh, crying and went to the altar and started repenting. 
and the Holy Ghost moved up on me and and I went over and laid hands on her and the Holy Ghost come up on her and she started speaking in tongues and and I come out of there thank God uh, speaking in tongues myself I got I got what I'd been looking for thank the Lord and ever since then I've been satisfied that God ain't been fooling with me no more I'm satisfied that he's really uh, delivered me from all my vehicle my, my, my sins thank God thank God so when I started serving the Lord well, or trying to uh, I went to several different churches like the Church of God and like the Baptist Church and and uh, nothing satisfied me it didn't seem to have what I wanted see to take care of me so um, I got to talking to my wife's daddy and she he'd been in holding this way for years and years and I asked him about it and he says, well, the only thing he knew to do was to pray and just to ask the Lord for it and, and that's the only one that can give it to you is the Lord, the only one that can give it to you. So I did that and I started praying and I started seeking the Lord and one night about, uh, well, after I went to bed, we was living in a little trailer. It was uh, had about two rooms in it, two or three rooms, and we just had got to sleep and and I wakened in my sleep, I heard a, it sounded to me like it, I heard a car horn blowing away off somewhere, just barely could hear it, you know. Then as it got closer, it seemed like it become as a wind. And then the closer it got, it seemed like it rolled, it kept rolling, getting louder and louder. And it came into one of the windows in and went all through my body and left out the other window and it left me just paralyzed, so to speak. I couldn't move, I couldn't say anything, I couldn't do anything. And it was just it was just showing me what was going to happen when I got the Holy Ghost. So it wasn't long after that till I received the Holy Ghost out here at Oak Hill in uh, in a temple out there, um, Freddie Steele's Tabernacle. I was very happy, so happy that the crowd went off and left me. Mainly the ones that I was riding with went off and left me, and I was shouting a victory and speaking in tongues all that time. And uh, when I receive the Holy Ghost, I, I feel so happy and it seems like there's nothing in this world can bother me. And when the Lord deals with me, why, he uh, deals with me through uh, making a twingling in my stomach. And uh, I'll either uh, go shouting or speaking in tongues or get a leading to handle the serpents. And last Saturday night was the first experience I ever have of drinking the strychnine myself. But to my opinion, that was really something great. I really enjoyed myself, and I still enjoy myself. And without the Holy Ghost, I don't think I could go on because the Holy Ghost leads and guides me, and I think it keeps me out of other things of the world. And, and if I think, well, if I don't want to do something that the world has, well, what would I do? I wouldn't have the Holy Ghost to lead me and guide me and keep me going to where I think that I should be going. I would like to be able to help someone else to uh, receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and I'd like to raise my children to be in the way that they would want to receive the Holy Ghost. So to the best of my knowledge and understanding, well, that's the best I could say about it to what I could know about it. And all I could say without it, well, I don't think I could <laughs> praise God. Oh, my. Glory be to God. I just don't think I could go on without the Holy Ghost because it's so wonderful and it's so great that I just want to keep on and doing the best I can and be in the will of the Lord. So I went back to church that night. I began to call on the Lord and glory to God. Hallelujah, my son of my house. You know, he got me down on the floor and he baptized me with the good Holy Ghost and fire. And glory be to God. You know, I've had that good thing ever since. Hallelujah. Testifying within me. I I had that good power shaking me, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I, I, hallelujah to thee, I shunned my house. It's the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave. He said, but also quicken your mortal body. Glory to God. Children, I don't just take this to church with me, but I take it anywhere I go. Glory to God. It's salvation. It's something that you know about. Glory to God. It's something, hallelujah, that you don't have to ask people if, you, if you've got, but you, you can let it shine. Hallelujah. He said, well, the light of God, I've got to go 
gonna let it shine until and glory to God. He gave me this good life and he gave me the good Holy Ghost. He gave me the witness to know. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Until and I, you know, I'm not much of a talker tonight, but God gets a hold of me and just puts the words out of my mouth, just what he wants me to say. Until and glory to God, I want to mind the things of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This good thing I'm telling you about tonight is better, uh, is sweeter than any tongue can tell. Glory to God. Uh, uh, because it's down in you. Uh, because it shakes your modern body. Uh, uh, because it testifies for itself. Uh, it makes you love your enemy. Glory to God if you've got in there. Uh, it makes everybody look good to you. It makes them shine out. Uh, yes. uh, glory to God. I'm a house in the I'm a whole shun in the eye. Glory to God. service put something in the service and if you haven't got the Holy Ghost come and seek the Lord and get it because you need it Amen. and uh, I like to say this too just be yourself if you obey the Lord when we don't have uh, photographers around well, I obey him when we do and uh, just be yourself now there might be somebody here that maybe don't want their picture taken. If you do, just make it known in kind words, and uh, these boys understand. Some do and some don't. Some will and some won't. So there you are. But we want to worship the Lord. Now, I, I don't think that Holy Ghost people should come to church and just sit down and depend on the other feller. I think that's a mistake that we make when we depend on the other feller to do the preaching, praying, and singing, and shouting, and and all of it, you've got to work to do if God's give you his spirit. There's some folks yet to come, and uh, we hope they'll have a safe journey here, far and near, wherever they come from. I don't know who all, I told some of the folks, I said, come if you want a seat, you better come on around. So, uh, thank the Lord. We hope God will bless the service, hope the Lord will get glory out of it. And what you do, do it heartfully unto the Lord because that's really what counts. Worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. 
And uh, we hope everybody will get a blessing out of the service, whether a saint or whether a sinner. We hope that the sinners will get a blessing, feel something that they have never felt before. And that may be the spirit of the Lord. They hope they'll hear something maybe they've never heard before and hope that God will bless them. You know, every individual soul is, is a creation of God. It makes no difference where they're from, who they are, what color they are. They're God's creation because by one blood, he made all nations. By one blood, he done it. It makes no difference where the man is and what part of the country of the world it is. It's God's creation and it's God's nation. Thank the Lord. He fills the whole universe and it's the same God in Africa today, the same God is right here on Scrabble Creek in West Virginia. There's no difference in people, it's just how people act. That's all the thing that makes a difference. It's just how they act, how they live, that makes a difference because they're all people. Just everybody's just people. So we hope God will bless you tonight. Hope you'll get in the service and obey the Lord. I believe it would be good for us to all pray. And we're glad to have all you folks with us tonight, far and near, from Logan which is around 90 miles or 100 miles from here. Some folks from Logan, brother, a sister workman and sister fans. And uh, this brother here, Brother Miller. And uh, we've got Brother Turner and his folks from Camp Creek tonight, which is about 60 miles or better away. We've got some here from Oak Hill. We've got some from Prosperity, Brother and Sister Lucas. We've got some from On the Creek here. We've got some from Golly Bridge, some from different places. We've got some from Dixie and some from uh, Brother, well, uh, Oak Hill again, okay. Brother Miller. Far and near that makes up this service. We don't tell you what to say. We don't tell you you can't say it. We don't tell you what to say when you do say. Now, for a little country place, it's pretty hard to beat that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Thank the Lord, where you can go and find freedom. So, uh, <clears throat> let's have everybody that will join in and pray. You can pray where you're at. You can come up here if you think it's a better place to pray. If it's better back there where you're at, I'd be willing to come back there. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Let's have prayer and ask God's blessings. I want you it's... all to remember uh, Brother Ronis' baby. He's in the hospital from an asthma attack. I'm a hot diet. I'm a hot son. Oh. No, Rick. I'm behind him. Oh, God. Oh, thank God. Thank God. And I want you to remember uh, Sister Gladys' little girl drunk some kind of poison or something uh, of some kind and uh, they took it to the hospital. And uh, so let's all remember these things and God can fix it. And does anybody that's got a, a back condition at this time of God will fix that too. Thank God. And well, he's able. Praise God. Praise God. Don't y'all pray for me and my home. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Bless the Lord. Glory to God that we be found on the will of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Elsie, I thank God for watching over me on my way home. Bless you. Bless you. Glory to God. I still call this home. Bless you. I want y'all to pray for me and my wife. Praise the Lord. We need your prayer. Bless you, Brother Jimmy Withrow. Is there anybody in here? Now, we're happy to have Brother Jimmy, his wife, Charlotte, and these folks from Virginia. How many yeah. came from Virginia today to be in here in service tonight? Would you hold up your hands? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that little sweet baby there. Seven. And you've never been here before, have you? Seven. Never been here before. We're glad to have Smiling Bobby over here and his dear old mother here. And she asked me yesterday, I believe it was the day before maybe, uh, to pray for her eyesight. And uh, she said she's practically blind in one eye and her other eye, she's hoping that God will at least give her sight in one eye. Now, ain't that pretty good? Uh, Lord, if I can't see in two, would you just let me have one of them? Good folks, I feel like praying right now. And Sister Proctor, will you came up, come up here? Well, let's pray for this dear old mother here, that God will bless her eyesight. Yes, Lord. Now, you say, well, God is not doing anything like that. God is not doing it. If he's not doing it, it's because people are not believing. Amen. Now, that's all there is to it. If you believe, God is obligated to do something for you if you believe, yes, whatever you believe. Yes. Thank the Lord. So, uh, let's try to believe for it. Your back is hurting you. Will you come and be prayed for? I'm not much anyhow, but I'm hurting 
Well, now Brother Otis felt like somebody must have I a felt it on the, back, so. on the right side of the spine. How about it? <laughs> Let's believe the Lord, good folks. Now, if God can reveal it to people. I've had people, and you've seen it too, people call them right out of the church yes, and tell amen. them what was ailing them. Yes, amen. Now, here she is. She says, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Here's her eyes bothering her. Now, if you're here and anything's bothering you, you come up here and let us pray for you, and you pray with us. Yes, Lord. If you feel lazy and tired and on the drag, please get out of that and come up here and be prayed for or pray with somebody. Don't sit around and do nothing. You know the scripture teaches very much against the idols, I-D-O-L-S, yeah. and then it speaks against I-D-L-E, idleness, idleness. And if you sit around in church idle, it's just as bad as sitting somewhere else idle and a lot worse yeah. maybe. Because you ought to be on fire for God. You ought to either be hot or cold. Now, if you're not going to be hot for God, get just as cold as you can get. Yeah. Well, know what side of the fence you're on, sure enough. <laughs> In Kenston, North Carolina, the other Sunday, a brother was up talking and said, says, I know why some of you won't praise the Lord. said, you're just ashamed. Talked like they ought to repent of it. And, and he says, it won't hurt you to repent. I said, well, it sure didn't hurt me to repent. And, and a brother sitting by me, bless his heart, some of you know him, old brother Mary, he says, no, it didn't hurt me the first time or the next hundred times. <laughs> so if you're here tonight and, and, and the first time didn't hurt you and the next time didn't hurt you to pray and repent, you say, well, I don't have anything to repent of. Well, I may have a lot. I hope the Lord will be merciful to me and forgive me, don't you? Yes, Jesus. Have you really got that kind of a spirit no! of other people? If you have, you can get somewhere with God. You'll, you'll obtain mercy. We want to pray for this lady right here. Let's pray that the Lord bless her. Bless her. Thank you. 
that they think it's a disgrace to touch a servant. I don't want to be highly esteemed among men. I'd rather be just what I am, glory be to God, than I would to be some great big thing highly esteemed among men that don't amount to nothing. I agree with my say amen to it. And, and I don't think that anyone has to say any amen for what I say, but I do think you ought to say it for the glory of God if you're that clean what you are. Thank you. Thank you. Now, there's a lot of people wouldn't like this testimony I have, Thank you. but I don't yeah. care whether they like it or not. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Bless you. I won't ask you to pray for me. If you want to pray for me, that's all right. Glory be to God. Maybe, maybe it, it takes all your time to pray for yourself. Praise yeah. God, but if you want to pray for me, I appreciate it. Anybody. Right. Holy Ghost, if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, pray for me anyway. Glory Thank to God you. if you want to. Hallelujah. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Hallelujah. Praise Thank the Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I sometimes think I need a lot of it. Glory be to God. I hope he has mercy on me and saves me. Bless his sweet name. So that's why I live and do the way I do, because that's the way I believe. Praise God. You know, I'd, I'd hate to think that a man didn't have liberty to say what he wanted to say, to be what he wanted to be, or someone try to make him do what he wanted him to do. I'll tell you, they have a hard time making me do it. I'd stay home before I'd do it. I, I, before I would obey some people, I'd stay home. Actually, I would. I'd stay home before I'd obey some people. Praise God, I believe in them what God said. Yeah. Bless you, sweet. Bless you, Thank you, Jesus. If you don't know about it that time, I don't believe the Lord does. If you can't sing or play music, I think you do, do, do what you can do. Stomp your feet, clap your hands, make a short noise on the Lord. few days, yesterday and today, I had a spell with you, and I thought I was about ready to pass away from here. I don't know when God's going to call me home, but whenever my time comes, I don't want to be dragging back. And another time, I was so near dead that God lifted off of the bed, and I'm here in the midst, in the prayers, by the prayers of people. 
I was dying there. That was the last of February. Best I remember, the last week in February. That I thought I was gone. I was really passing away from here so fast. It just seemed like it in my mind. I was suffering so bad that my mind was just coming and going. When I called them to pray for me. That was to encourage me as I went on my journey. I was leaving here. I was going to the place that we're talking about all the time where there's joy and peace and no suffering and no problem. I thought I was leaving here, Brother Elsie. I thought my ticket was already gone. It was done been read and I was, my number called was saying it. But when God stared me and I, I began seeing the, a little vision, a little angel would come to, hit, to me of the night. They was about four or five nights that this little girl come to me and brought me a little white bowl. Snow White. The little girl was dressed in white. Had long gone hair. She brought me this little bowl and said, take this and drink it. Well, I had been awful sick. In fact, I'd went through two major operations just about a year before that. The doctors down here in the Laird Memorial Hospital didn't think that I was coming through the operations, let alone live to get out of there. And when they turned me out of that hospital, they didn't tell me to come back for no checkup. They didn't think I was going to live the two or three weeks to see them again. When I went walking back in six, six months later, they were surprised to see me there. So I thank God for his wonderful power. But when this little girl began bringing me that little bowl, I looked down in it and I hadn't been able to drink sweet milk for over two years, that it would actually hurt me. So I looked down in it, but in my mind, I didn't think it was going to hurt me. I just looked to see what was in that cup. And she said, take this, this is eternal life for you. Take it and drink it. Even if you're dead, I don't know what this means. Though you are dead, it won't hurt you. And I took it and did drink it, and it was sweet milk to me. If that was eternal life for me, I want to keep drinking it by But they brought me that, this little girl visited me every night for four or five nights. And I began to get strength and courage. And finally she brought me a little white dish with meat in it and told me to eat. And when I eat of that, brother, I think that was the fifth night, I told Brother Richardson that I wanted some lamb. I wanted him to get me a piece of lamb, and I hadn't been eating any solid food. I think I drank a little chicken broth along for about a month. I wanted the lamb, and I eat it in Jesus' name, and I drink the sweet milk in Jesus' name, and I'm standing here by the prayers of the people, and I know that he healed my body. And I did ask to be healed. Not that I might go around visiting some of my neighbors, or not that I might uh, run around to some big party, or see all these sights and scenes. I thank God that he spared me to see the things that I do see. But I do want to be in church.
be right quiet. I've got this to do. If I don't do it now, some of them might go, go to go home, and they won't get in on this. Brother Turner's here tonight from Camp Creek. 
I think it's around 60 or 65 miles, somewhere near, from over there, over to here. Brother Turner has a large family, and I'm sure that he can use a good offering tonight. Now, I don't want to wear you in, take too much of the time, but I would like to get as much as $50. How many believers we can? I'll see how many believers there is in here. How many believers we can get? There's one, two, three, four. <laughs> I know what the... <laughs> now, I'm going to ask Brother Otis, he was so nice to volunteer to go around that time. Where's he at? Right here he is. Take this basket and let's go up again. <laughs> Now, don't nobody say we can't. Just don't say that. Say we can by the help of the Lord. Thank the Lord. Lord bless you, Brother Jimmy. There's a man about 400 miles away from home, but had another dog. He used to, he used to have a radio program, and I'd hear his radio program, and such talking and thumbs and shouting, and, and you know sometimes preachers will get on the radio and they'll say, that noise, that stomping, you know what, the clap of my hands, too much noise ruins it. No, it don't ruin it, it makes it good. Yes. And, and I listened to his program, and I thought, well, boy, they sure have got something. <clears throat> then later here, he comes to Scrabble Creek. Thank the Lord. Now, he didn't agree with Sheriff and Hannon and the Fifth Attorney like that I believe it, like we believe it here, to start with. But uh, nobody tried to shove it down his throat by the pin rod that I know anything about. But here he ended up in Scrabble Free. He didn't even know I was going to do this. He said it was, may not be so happy right at the time you're doing, but after you, he feels happy. So he didn't smile at me for calling you a coward, but I'm going to Thank the Lord. <laughs> I felt like it was the Lord wanted this done. Uh, if I was begging for myself, I don't know how much I'd have got if I'd asked for $50. I just don't know. But I felt like the Lord wanted me to get this for Brother Turner. Brother Lorraine said you had 28 what? 28.59. 30. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 5 is 44, 59. Let's get another dollar. Somebody else. Somebody else. Lady, I see you pulling that out, and I want to put it back in your side. Brother Reston, don't put it back in your pocket. Pick it up over. Okay. Okay. Thank the Lord. Take him up so I had to take him out of there, but I couldn't get him out for shaking. I just tucked him out. 
everything in Jesus' name. Bless your holy, righteous name. Come on. Amen, amen, amen.